Now let's talk about predators. So caterpillar predators are, um, once we have an established garden and we've gotten rid of those chemicals, then we're going to start seeing a lot more bug varieties, insect varieties, um, wildlife. We're going to start seeing a lot of stuff that we might not have ever seen before. So the easiest way to protect your caterpillars, if you want to do so, is the enclosures or are the enclosures. So this one right here, I want you guys to take a look at this when, before we go out to the butterfly area. I have a whole lot of pipe vine chrysalises in here that I've taken out of the yard so that we don't have predators getting them. The black swallowtails, they're easy to get. Except this guy who's holding on. Um, this is a black swallowtail chrysalis right here. It lays eggs inside a chrysalis or inside the caterpillar itself and the larva will feed. Um, uh, many, many chrysalises we've had um, where you can see a little exit hole and a string. And so the little string, I guess, is, is excess fluid or something. Um, I don't know if it's from the larva, but it looks just like a maggot. It comes out of the side of the caterpillar or the chrysalis. And maybe, yeah. And it will go into like the soil or uh, underneath a moist leaf to go ahead and pupate into the fly. So, and they are very, very common. It's just something that we don't really see uh, in the insect world because we just don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. I had branches in, in this cage um, and they all went up to the top on the corner. Um, so, you know, they'll pick their place, um, you know, in the wild, they can walk a long, long, long ways, but, you know, in the cage, they just, they kind of go around and around until they're tired. They're like, okay, well, we'll just go right here. So they'll make their chrysalis up in the corner. So, but they're protected from, you know, the wasps. I had very, very early. If you've been following my Facebook, like early spring, I had uh, quite a few um, sleepy orange, uh, butterflies, caterpillars, and chrysalises. And I had a, a, a host plant that was fairly tall and I just brought it into the greenhouse. Well, I had chrysalises all along one branch and they were getting very, very, very ready to hatch and I had to leave. I didn't want them to hatch and not be able to get out. So I set the whole plant out in the garden area and when I got home, a wasp had eaten the chrysalises before those butterflies emerged, even though they were, I mean, they were gonna hatch that day. Um, but I, when I went out there, there was one left that he was working on and he had eaten like half of that one and eaten the other two. So wasps are very prolific. So one egg out of every 100 will actually make it to uh, an adult butterfly. So what happens to all of these eggs? Well, flies, wasps, some of them birds. A lot of birds don't eat most of the butterflies, but there's a few that they do. Lizards, um, lizards are big culprits, um, believe it or not. Um, I had a praying mantis and I uh, was out in my yard and I thought I was accusing lizards. <laughs> and the lizards are like, hey, it's not me. Um, and I kept watching and pretty soon this praying mantis, I, I was seeing all of these, you know, uh, wings from my butterflies, like a killing ground. And I'm like, oh no, this praying mantis was out there. They catch them, they eat the head off, they eat part of the abdomen, 
and the wings dropped to the ground. So that was my little killing field. I had all of these butterfly wings um, in this one area, but I did find out who was doing it. So last year I brought the praying mantis in after he had gotten one of the black uh, pipe vines. And um, so I got to show and tell with the, the uh, <laughs> praying mantis there for a little while. So there's a lot of different things that will get them. Wasps are probably the most aggressive uh, predators out there. I think they probably kill more than most of the other things. So I'm always trying to protect the um, caterpillars from the wasps. There are um, a couple of wasp traps that um, you, sometimes you put a, a, a liquid in there, like a little bit of water, and then there's a little pheromone that is sold that you can add to that or sometimes they recommend uh, almost like a sugar water um, type of thing um, and what happens is the um, wasp goes up into that and he gets confused up in there and he can't get back out so he's going up inside something that he can't get out of and there's a lot of different ones there's decorative ones there's you know different ones you can get online i think they probably even have some up here in the store um, and then there's also a lot of different things that are the wasp sprays um, in this case you might want to use a chemical i really don't like chemicals but um, there's one by green thumb that when you shoot it up on the wasp nest, it engulfs the wasp nest. It kind of like, have you ever seen that great stuff they use in construction? It like whoosh, gets all fluffy like meringue. So it, it encapsulates the wasp nest and it's really good because you're not getting excess chemicals anywhere. And if you use the regular one that shoots, make sure you pull any plants away because you'll get a little bit of splashback usually and it will spot your plants. So, but I, I do like that Green Thumb product. It's, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, so those two things will help a lot. Uh, the other thing is when you have vines, like we have a lot of passion vines on privacy fences and stuff. And so every single winter, I bring those down. I clear those off. Uh, watch for chrysalises, of course. It's really important because the chrysalises will overwinter up underneath there a lot of times. So watch for chrysalises. But if you clean that off, you're going to save yourself some, some problem with wasps. So if you have a vegetable garden, you like your bee assassins, you're like, oh boy, these are really cool. Um, if you have a butterfly garden, you're like, oh no, you're not getting another caterpillar. Um, they will usually get the caterpillars when they're very small and they have a mouthpiece that sticks into their prey and they suck the juices out of it. So um, your poor little honeybees will get it from the bee assassins. So sometimes I have to get my bee assassin population down a little bit because of uh, since I don't spray chemicals, I end up with a lot of them because they have a lot of food in my yard. <laughs> they look kind of orangey. The adults are about this big and they have little black markings on them. They have long legs and a lot of the, um, the insects that eat other insects, they have a very long pointed skinny mouthpiece because that's what they insert into the other insect and they suck the juice out. So insects that are chewing on your plants have a different type of mouthpiece. They're usually a chewing type of insect or if they're aphids and they have a, a pointed mouthpiece, it's very, very short. These have a very long mouthpiece. So very long legs and a very long mouthpiece on them. And they move kind of slow until you go to get them and then, they <laughs> and then they run away real fast and they can fly. So if you see this odd looking orange thing flying, um, it could be a bee assassin.